Welcome to Daily Editorial Analysis brought to you by Shankaraj Academy Civil Speedia team. Today's date is September 5, 2024 and today's topic of discussion is two editorials. We have taken one from Indian Express and another from the Hindu. The first editorial is subclassification verdict through Ambedkar's idol. So this editorial is taken from the Hindu newspaper. So with this editorial as base we are going to discuss about the reservation what is the constitutional backup for the reservation along with it we will also discuss about the key judgments regarding the reservation added to that we will also see what are the ongoing challenges and debates with, with respect to the sub classification on reservation the next editorial that we are going to discuss is world bank raises india's growth forecast but points to challenge on the export front as we have already said this editorial is taken from the indian express page 10 so on this context we will explain what is world bank's forecast with respect to india's growth what is the sectoral contribution of india's economy we will explain detailly about the what are the challenges to the export on india what are the challenges on the export front and what are the measures taken by government to boost the export in india so here is an important announcement Shankaraj Academy is conducting a pre-storming test series from 6 September 2024. So this test series consists of almost 48 tests which you can enroll by clicking the link given below in the description. We are also conducting a mains open mock test to boost your UPSC mains preparation with us. So without further delay let's get into today's discussion. So this is the first editorial that we are going to discuss today. It is taken from the newspaper The Hindu. Sub classification verdict through the Ambedkar ideals. So to understand this editorial go back to August 1 2024. So a landmark case happened between the state of Punjab versus the Davinder Singh. So in this case they reversed the earlier judgment and uphold the sub classification of sc reservation actually sc consists of various subgroups some are dominant while others are marginalized so this sub classification will ensure that the reservation benefits will reach the marginalized group so with this basis we will understand what are the constitutional provision for the reservation the key judgments and what is sub classification and what are the challenges in their implementation one by one so let's begin with the main question first reservation should not be seen as a poverty alleviation program support this statement by analyzing the importance of reservation even in the 21st century especially for a country like india address the debates it brings in and a way forward for the sustenance of the equality and equity along with the diversity in the society through the lens of reservation so to answer this question let's see the basics and you try to understand to write the answer in the comment section and we will review for you first is the constitutional provisions article 15 clause 4 so article 15 basically it prohibits the discrimination on grounds of race religion caste sex and place of birth but this article 15 clause sub clause 4 this empowers the state to make special provisions for three for example the socially and educationally backward classes along with the scheduled classes and the scheduled tribes the next article that will allow the reservation is the article 16 clause 4 article 16 provides the equality of opportunity in terms of public employment but this sub clause 4 allows for reservation in case of public employment who are not adequately represented for example the backward classes socially and educationally backward classes along with the sc and st next is the article 46 we know that article 36 to 51 comes under the dpsp so this 46 directs the states to promote the educational as well as the economic interests of the weak sections of the society so next is the article 330 and 332 so this two articles provides for the reservation of seats for the sc along with the st in the legislature the 330 article provides for reservation in the lok sabha which is the lower house of the central government and the 332 article provides for the reservation for the sc and st in the legislative assembly which is the lower house for the state government make note of the differences in each case next we have the article 338 so this allows for the establishment of national commission for the scheduled caste so this commission will ensure the rights of the scheduled 
cash are guaranteed. So, these are some important constitutional provisions with respect to the scheduled cash and scheduled tribes and their reservation. So, now we will see some important judgment regarding the reservation. First is the famous Indrasani case or the Mandal case in the year of 1992. So, this Mandal commission gave a recommendation for the reservation of 27 percentage for the OBC which is the other backward class. So, this case upheld the reservation for the OBC which is 27 percentage. So, this case also said that the total reservation should not exceed the 50 percentage. So, they set a limit for the reservation which is the 50 percentage including for the SC, ST and OBC. So, for OBC we have 27 percentage, for SC we have 15 percentage and ST we have 7.5 percentage which is almost half of the percentage given for the SC which is 15 and 7.5. So, next we have the EV Chinnaya versus the Andhra Pradesh case in the year of 2004. So, they said that schedule class are a homogeneous group that is there are single and the same group and the subclassification within this SC group is very unconstitutional in nature. So, you can see in the article we have reverted the case judgment given in this judgment. So, the next important case is the Journal Singh versus the Lakshmi Narayan Gupta case in the year of 2018. So, they gave the creamy layer principle application for the SC and ST in case of promotions. So, let us try to understand what is creamy layer first. So, this creamy layer was introduced in the Indrasani case as we already saw. This is based on the income and the job which is practiced by an individual. So, if a person is earning or a family is earning about 10 lakhs per annum, they come under the creamy layer. But this 8 lakhs from the agriculture is not taken into the account. It also includes group A as well as group B officers. Added to that, they also have high executive officers in the case of private and the public sector. So, this is in short explanation about the creamy layer. So, this is in OBC reservation, but this journal Singh case said that creamy layer applies to the SC and ST in case of promotion. Note that the reservation along with the creamy layer is applicable only in case of promotion and not in case of initial reservation for the SC and ST. So, this is because the economic status of the people is not considered. Even though they had a good economic background, the people of the SC and ST have faced serious social evils such as the untouchability and social exclusion. So, the creamy layer concept was not introduced in case of the original reservation with respect to the SC and ST. The next important case is the state of Punjab versus the Davinder Singh 2020. Note thus, this year is 2020, the same judgment happened in the year 2024 which reverted this judgment. Next is the Maratha reservation judgment in the year of 2021. So, they declared the Maratha reservation as unconstitutional because the reservation exceeded the 50 percentage limit. We already saw the reservation of 50 percentage limit was set up in the Mandal case. So, now we will see what is subclassification of reservation. We already saw in the initial discussion that the SC group has many subgroups. Some are socially good and some are marginalized. So, subclassification is done so that the reservation benefits will reach the marginalized group. So, this is the definition given here. Creating categories within the reserve class to ensure benefits reach the most deprived classes. So, now the recent judgment on the August 1, 2024 says that it supports the subclassification within the SC because it aligns with the Ambedkar ideals. So, he supported the reservation for the SC who are socially disadvantaged. So, he uphold the values such as the fraternity, solidarity and equality. So, this subclassification is aligned with the ideals of the Ab Ambedkar. Having seen about the subclassification of reservation, now we will see what are the challenges in the implementation of this reservation. First is the regional differences. We can see there is a varying socio-economic status of the SC in the different regions of the India. For example, the subcategorization is introduced in the southern region, but the northern region is facing a challenge in the introduction of this subcategorization. Next is the fear of the fragmentation within the SC. We can see there are many common movements organized by the SC, such as the Dalit movement. If subcategorization is introduced in case, this can lead to fragmentation within the 
AC and which can disrupt the unity among them. Next is the beneficiary identification. We have seen we will identify the most marginalized group among the classified group. So, how to identify accurately identify the deprived classes is a serious question regarding this. Next is the political and social opposition. So, few groups fear that if subclassification is introduced, they might have a reduction in their share and reservation. So, there is a opposition from certain groups which is having a say in the implementation. Next is the judicial review. You already saw Chinnaya case has not uphold the reservation subclassification, but the recent judgment of the Punjab has reverted this judgment. The last is the implementation delay. Because of all these factors, there is a huge delay in the implementation because it is a highly time consuming process because of all these reasons. There are also some serious questions with respect to this implementation. One is the creamy layer. So, there is a serious question that whether the creamy layer should be applied to the SC and ST as well. There is also another question which is the reservation cap. We saw there is a reservation cap of about 50 percentage whether this should be existing or removed is a serious question. Also, another debate is the whether reservation should be given on the economic background or in case of the social backwardness. So, all these are major questions which are existing with respect to the reservation. So, these are the information we saw regarding the reservation. You can try answering the question we discussed in the earlier part of the discussion. You can also share your views regarding the reservation in the comment below. So, with this, we will complete the discussion on this editorial and now let us move on to the next one. So, this is the next editorial that we are going to discuss today. And this editorial is taken from the newspaper, The Indian Express. So, this editorial says that the World Bank has raised the growth of Indian economy forecast, but it has said about the challenges in case of the export in India. So, this need to be addressed. So, on this basis, we will see what are the contribution of each sector to the Indian economy. We will also see what are the challenges in the export and how these challenges can be addressed. So, let us begin with the main question. Discuss the current challenges faced by India on the export front and evaluate the effectiveness of India trade policies and economic reforms in addressing these challenges. Suggest measures to enhance export competitiveness. So, to answer this question, let us see the details what need to be addressed and you try to answer the question and post it in the comments. So, as of 2023 to 2024 estimates, the Indian growth rate, GDP growth rate was estimated to be 6 to 6.5. Actually, this growth rate shows a moderate resilience because we faced post-COVID impact along with it we also saw major inflation and the geopolitical tension. So, in spite of all these challenges, so this growth rate shows a moderate resilience. So, according to this editorial, World Bank has raised the percentage of growth rate estimates. Previously, it was 6.6 percentage. Now, it is about 7 percentage. Similarly, RBI is also expecting a growth rate of 7.1 percentage which aligns with the IMF which is the International Monetary Fund. So, now we will see what are the contribution of each sector to the Indian economic growth. So, GDP is nothing but the final value of goods and services produced in the country during a financial year or a particular year. So, first is the primary sector which is the agriculture. So, the GDP contribution from the agriculture sector is about 17 to 18 percentage according to the economic survey and the Ministry of Statistics and Program Implementation. So, this sector is very important for the employment because they employ almost 50 percentage of the Indian population, but it has very low productivity. That is why various schemes like the uh, in case of financial credit, irrigation, and the post harvest management are introduced to increase the productivity in this sector. Next is the industrial sector or the manufacturing sector also known as the secondary sector. So, they contribute almost 27 to 29 percentage in the GDP of Indian economy. So, but this secondary sector is facing a slowdown because of the issues in the global supply chain. Next is the tertiary or the important sector in the Indian economy which is the service sector. They account for almost 
55 to 58 percentage in the GDP. So, this is a dominant sector in the Indian economy because they are accounting to the information technology and software export. So, having discussed about the sectoral contribution to the Indian economy, now we will see what are the challenges to the export from India. First is the global economic slowdown in the US and EU. European Union. Global economic slowdown is nothing but there is less profit making in the businesses. So, in turn this will impact the income generated by the individual. So, they have, have less demand for the products. So, this global economic slowdown is impacting the demand for the goods in the Indian market. Next is the dependence on the traditional market. So, all the global population are depending on the traditional market such as the US and U Europe. So, so, there is less dependence on the goods which are produced in the Indian market. Next is the limited export basket. We have only few products which can be exported such as the IT, the petroleum products, gems and jewels along with the pharmaceuticals. We need to diversify the export basket to increase the export to other countries. Next is the tra trade barriers. Various trade requirements, quality requirements are needed for the countries to export the products from India to other countries. For example, certain quality standards fixed by the foreign nations has to be met by the Indian exporters to export their products to the required country. So, this is acting as a barrier in case of exports. Similarly, certification and quotas are acting as a barrier in case of the export. Also, we have a deficiency in the infrastructure. We have a poor logistic along with the poor facility in India. We also have a large amount of transportation cost which can hinder the export to the foreign countries. We are also lacking in the technological upgradation which can be a serious limitation in case of manufacturing as well as the exporting. So, these are the important challenges in case of exporting the Indian products to the other nations. We have a infrastructure deficiency, lack of a technological upgradation, a limited export basket along with the global economic slowdown. Now, we will see what are the trade policy measures which has to be taken by the Indian government to make these challenges. First is the free trade policy. 2023. The Indian Free Trade Policy 2023 is targeting the export should reach up to 2 trillion dollars by the year 2030. So, to meet this goal, India government is promoting the free trade agreement, digital trade as well as the infrastructure products such as the Gati Shakti. Now, we have a free trade agreement. What is a free trade agreement? So, these are agreements which are signed between two countries to conduct the trade in a simple and easy way. So, they will agree to reduce the tariffs on export as well as import to ease the business. It will also help them to access the market easily. Currently, India is having a free trade agreement with UK, UAE, Mauritius, Japan and Australia. We have also introduced production linked initiative scheme. So, this scheme will incentivize the manufacturers who are residing in India, especially in the key sectors. So, this will boost the manufacturing in the domestic market. We also have export promotion schemes such as the EPCG, Export Promotion Capital Goods and the MEIS, Merchandise Export from India Scheme. So, these schemes will reduce the tax burden and promote the export from India. Next, we have the special economic zone. So, these economic zones will have a special incentives to the manufacturers. They also provide the infrastructure support to the manufacturers residing in this special economic zone. For example, we have Cochin in Kerala, Noida in the Uttar Pradesh, Vishakapatnam in the Andhra Pradesh. So, the important initiatives to promote the export in India are the free trade policy, the free trade agreement, the production linked initiative scheme along with it we also have the special economic zones and the export promotion scheme such as the EPCG and the MEIS. So, now we will see what are the economic policy and reforms which are undertaken to support the exports in India. First is the Make in India initiative. 
So, this Make in India initiative is attracting the foreign investment in the Indian land. So, India will act as a manufacturing hub, thus by promoting an export competitiveness. So, this Make in India initiative is reducing a red tape. So, it will be easy for the foreign investment to start their establishment in India. Next, we have the Atma Nirbar Bharat. So, under this scheme, it is promoting the self-reliance and the domestic industries. So, under this scheme, we can promote the export as well as reducing the reliance on the import. Thirdly, we have the ease of doing business. So, under this initiative, they are simplifying the regulation, also the reducing the bureaucratic interference. Example, we can say simplification of the GST regime. And fourth, we have the MSME support. So, subsidies, loans and easy market access are provided by the government. For example, we have the mudra loans. Mudra loans are provided for the medium, small and micro enterprises to support their manufacturing. And lastly, we have the export credit and financing. So, the export credit guarantee scheme, these schemes and the XM bank will provide the financial solution to the export-led initiatives. So, thereby these are the economic policies undertaken by the government of India to support and promote the export in India. First is the Make in India initiative, second the Atma Nirbar Bharat, third ease of doing business along with it we also have the MSME mudra loans and the ECGC financial, financial solution to the export led businesses. So, in this discussion we saw what is the sectoral contribution of each sector in the Indian economy. We also saw what are the challenges in the export and the measures taken by the government to address them. So, with this information you can try answering the main question for the question discussed in the earlier part of this article and leave it in the comment section below. We have come to end of today's discussion. If you found the video informative, do hit like, give your feedbacks as comment and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you. Have a nice day.